What's going on everybody? Patrick and Austin from Skier Reference here to do another trailer reaction. This time, Doom Prophecy. With audio. With audio this time. You'll never see it, but I might have reacted to the new Assassin's Creed trailer. You'll never see it. Much like a shadow. So, yeah. We got a new <laughs> piece of content from Denis Villeneuve's Dune uh, Cinematic Universe, if you really want to call it that. I don't know if that counts. Um... What are your what are your thoughts on this, Austin? So far, before we jump into this, all I know is it's ten thousand years before the birth yeah. of Paul Atreides. Beyond that, I know absolutely nothing. Are there books from that period? I don't even know. There are, but they're not written by Frank Herbert. Mostly, yeah. Mm. It's all so their extended son. lore. Yeah, pretty much. They're all written by his son Brian. I'm Brian Herbert. I know very little about the Bene Gesserit but their whole reason they become in the books rather than the movie is somewhat interesting and I know that that's part of this and so mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to see how much of that we'll see in this trailer yeah no I'm very curious to see that as well this has been a project that's been brewing probably since Dune 1 came out so i'm very curious to what it actually kind of looks like so uh yeah i think without further ado let's just jump right into this let's do it epic music before cool. the birth of paul atreides before the universe would know us as the bene Gesserit. sounds like the track that was in dune one when they're coming out of their big ship at the beginning we founded a sisterhood mm -hmm. Out over a dead body to houses to help them sift truth from oh lies. much sure. we created a network of influence throughout the imperium it's it looks relatively but similar power overall to comes the with a price movies which is good yeah Mark strong's so good Sister, him in everything mm -hmm. nothing is more important Ooh, that looks cool. and this is the marriage that makes it possible this is us playing God, and we will be judged for it. I am yeah, show more. So, is this shit. the first time they ever decided to do that? Um. Man, this is just cool. All right. Sisterhood above all. Dope. All right, what are we thinking, Austin? Where are we at? Uh, um, I, I'm mostly confused. Mm. I think that it catches the vibe well. I, like I said, I think it looks for being. I mean, I guess it's HBO Max, so like mm -hmm. a lot of money behind these things. But yeah, relatively, it looks pretty close to the movie, which is you know being in the same world is important. Um, I don't understand, I guess, that conversation about the child. So is it, or not the child, the, well, yeah, they're like, you know, selective breeding. So is it the first time they've ever done it? Or she just particularly not pleased with the fact that it's a Harkonnen? Are they suggesting that this is when they bred the Atreides and the Harkonnens? Uh, so from my understanding, I saw a little brief blurb because this has been, out all day of course we're recording this later in the day just a little peek behind the curtain but um i think it's the start of the Bene Gesserit group as a collective uh and i think with that comes their you know breeding and bloodline forming and trying to recreate the Kwisatz Haderach uh, that Paul is so i think this is just the beginning of that and House Harkonnen's been i don't know how long they've been a house but they've been around for a while, I have to imagine. So I, I think they're starting At least 10,000 with... years. Well, yeah, it's got to be, right? Because I think this one of the founding members has got to be a Harkonnen. I think that's what they're referring to there. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this a lot of this is unknown territory for me. I don't really know the origins of the Bene Gesserit other than, you know, what their goals and purposes are. So I, it seems to me, and I mean, I guess we didn't get a ton... A, you know backstory on their whole Bene Gesserit stuff but like mm -hmm. 
you know, part of the whole thing in um, the books is how the Bene Gesserit is, you know, doing all this because they don't want the world to be the world, the universe to be taken over by, you know, technology and taking it out of the hands of man and all of that, which they've largely not addressed in terms of what they're doing. Mm -hmm. They kind of seem to be just ignoring that as part of their mythos in in the movie version of this because we don't really ever have even conversations in in the movies about technology's place in all of this it's really so much about paul that we don't Mm. really get into that too much but that's the part of their backstory like that i find interesting like i want not just the bene Gesserit, but there's like what is it three different groups or four or something like that um even outside of the Bene Gesserit and how all of that comes about that I'm really interested in. So mm-hmm. where this lands in their timeline is going to be important for how much I am bought in. Cause I really just, it's such an odd organization just as a concept Yeah. that just exploring how they become is something that's really interesting to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I'm on, I'm on the mindset. One of my favorite things about Dune is all the politics and the shadow like government's shit going on like it's really the Benny Gesserit controlling things as we see in the movies so I think if they're able to nail the founding of that and kind of mix in a little bit more Game of Thrones because Dune feels pretty Game of Thronesy to begin with already but you throw in some Benny Gesserit and it's like yeah we got a real Game of Thrones going on here you know, I don't know but if they can nail that pol- political vibe that intrigues me I, I love that shit but you bring up a good I point would with um, the the timeline thing because I, I didn't even think about the butler and jihad which is where humans as a collective waged war on artificial intelligence and that's why you don't see any of that in dune um mm-hmm. that's why you have med tats like thufer hawat who uh, does that thing with his eyes he's so cool anyway so i'll be curious to see if they're able to well i don't know because like i said a lot of this is new territory for me if they're going to touch on that at all Yeah, I don't, like, it's hard, because as much as the whole, like, bloodline thing, the Paul Atreides is, you know, super, well, I don't know, like, because this is, this, take this with a grain of salt, because I'm saying it before we actually have this series, Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't think that Denis' movies stray from this too much, but one of the points of you know frank herbert making the this whole thing with paul atreides is to show that you shouldn't put your belief behind one man Mm -hmm. like they ultimately you know become the devil that they're trying to prevent right Right. i mean that's his whole storyline um and so the whole like fascination that they have with the bloodline leading up to paul atreides is kind of like theming it against the point of the books which is Mm. a line they're gonna have to be careful of you know with you know people who are very much into the books rather than just kind of casual dune viewers Mm -hmm. because you could easily go the wrong way with this where like you know i know denis wants he said he wants to make three movies is that am i remembering that correctly yeah he said messiah would be where he bows out which would be the next movie so you know he makes the third one and then the fourth one comes along gets away from him and maybe the next director you know sees how much people think about or or are fascinated by that and this thing goes the wrong way uh so there's a balance that has to be had there because this trailer really only talks about the bloodline it doesn't give us anything else about the Bene Gesserit other than mm-hmm. they are founded. Right. Right. Yeah. And I think you, you, you touch on a good point with the whole point of both the first two Dune books and both the first two Dune movies showing like, hey, this is how people can so easily rise to power just based on a couple of lies spread throughout generations and how they will fundamentally change the nature of what a, a, a crusade is really. Uh, but I do think and I haven't read more than the first two books, so I don't fully know this for sure, but I feel like we kind of move away from that and start tackling different themes here and there. But So I think there's a little bit of wiggle room, especially now that we're getting Doom Messiah for sure. Maybe we get 
uh, what's the third one? Children of Dune after that. I'd be very surprised if we got that, honestly. But um, well, And I think I the know. movies do a good job in general of towing that line. Yeah. I think that the larger issue is the bended kind of public discourse about uh, the movies because of the fact that Timothy does such a good job of portraying his rise to power mm-hmm. that and he's such a he's like a charming dude and he's attractive and so like there's been a lot of you know people i think who didn't get the point of the like no he's gonna cause like billions of people to and we haven't got to that part yet but yeah. billions of people are gonna die in this this crusade yeah and he's not actually a hero no and and so yeah like that's the part where like we i want i'm concerned that you know this could go the wrong way if this continues down that line of like Mm. um you know people keep getting focused on the bloodline part of it yeah no we'll see i i think we'll see i mean obviously we'll see the origins of where that all starts how that all begins what their true purpose and why they think they need it uh in the first place the reason for it being um I don't know. I I'm just kind of happy that we're getting something in Denise little Dune world. I think he's got a hand or two involved in this one, in this production. So it you know we saw it. The visual language of this is very much akin to what the movies have been so far. Um, mm-hmm. We're just kind of expanding on that world while also going into the past. So I I, I don't know. I don't think. I think. Yeah. Go on. I think that. Um... You know, that, the one lady who's arguing against the whole bloodline thing mm-hmm. will lead to what I hope is, you know, one of the cool things about if this is, you know, so early on that it's really the forming of the ideas of the Bene Gesserit mm-hmm. is you can have those, like, it's not necessarily political, but in a sense political, like Game of Thrones-esque, like, battles of ideas Mm-hmm. Um, you know, in this case, within the Bene Gesserit, instead of like you know different kingdoms or whatever you want to call it, I don't, I'm not a Game of Thrones guy, but uh, wow. I just haven't seen it. It's yeah. I don't have anything against it. No, I know I'm messing. <laughs> uh, um, and so that I mean that's the kind of stuff that I really love. It's one of the reasons why Aaron Sorkin is my favorite screenwriter because mm-hmm. he's doing a lot of his work through dialogue to talk about ideas, um, and so that really intrigues me about that so obviously you know that character being there we'll see how far that goes with it mm-hmm. and this is also cool that uh I, I guess i don't know the exact how it's all connected but we i mean we reacted to the penguin trailer right it, the one the one thing hbo max now max the worst rebrand Ugh. ever yeah um one good thing about that is they've almost done like what marvel is trying to do but better in the sense that like Mm -hmm. what they want to do is you know bring their streaming service in by bringing new um you know content strictly to that and that's where they get their tv shows but they just went like we're just going to drop 80 tv shows like onto disney plus with seemingly no regard for the quality of them Mm -hmm. and i know neither the penguin show nor this show have come out yet so we can't make a determination about how good or bad it's going to be but just from the trailers alone like i'm more excited for these two than i ever was for most of the shows that are have come to disney plus so i really think that they've kind of put together a blueprint of what you can really do as like ancillary content Mm -hmm. that connects um you know to your movies but they also make them not so important that like you have to see them to watch the movies i think that's one of the downfalls of some of the disney plus stuff um Mm -hmm. is it so integral to the story they're telling because they basically foregoed a lot of movies to make tv shows i mean there was a lot of movie that were movies that became tv shows even um and so this right right the penguin stuff obviously the penguin's going to be part of the 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 batman stuff but it's really kind of like a low level like crime syndicate type deal so you can kind of slot that in Similar to like the Daredevil, like Netflix, MECU stuff. Um, mm-hmm. And then this, you know, is so much earlier than the Dune movies that 
it's not really going to interact too much. So if you don't see it, it doesn't matter. But if you do see it, you get that deeper experience, that deeper knowledge of this this uh, world, which can really you know, build fandom and, and build interest. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm largely in agreement. I think HBO, I, Max, whatever the fuck. Uh, fucking hell. Uh, <laughs> I can think of two people need to work on their branding uh, skills. Anyway, um, I, I agree with you for the most part. I think doing stuff like this that is ancillary, that is not required reading for whatever the next Dune project is, um, is the way to do it. I think, and this is coming from someone who's watched every MCU Disney Plus show and has enjoyed a handful of them. Like, it's all, it, it doesn't allow room for a lot of creative vision. I think that's largely more of a problem for the MCU rather than Disney Plus. But I think, you could say that for a lot of the stuff on Disney Plus, where it's just, I think there's a National Treasure. Has the National Treasure Disney Plus show come out, or am I making that up? I believe that has, yeah. Oh my With God. none of the original cast. I thought there was one. Ah, it doesn't matter. That's, I mean, that's just point, case in point exactly. Like, that's just, um, I don't want to say soulless, but it, there's, I haven't watched it, so I can't really say that. But um, that's just a spinoff of a movie that people kind of like from 15 years ago, 20 years ago. So, I, whereas this is building off of a franchise that's gaining a lot of traction, especially after the new movies, same with the Penguin, um, and yet it's not required viewing. It's just there. It's quality television if you want it, and if you don't want it, okay, cool. Here's um, Hack Season 3. Go watch that or something. I don't know. But um, So, I do think they're doing a lot better on that front than Disney Plus has, and that, there, that there's a whole more nuance to that conversation, I think there's different examples we can point to on Disney side that are also really good, but I For think, sure. I think HBO's doing it so far pretty well. And I think this, have we gotten any other shows like that on HBO side aside from Dune and Penguin? So I don't think we None have. that I can think of off the top of my head. I, and that's one thing where like, we'll have to be, you know, we'll see how this goes. Cause one mm-hmm. of the things going against the Marvel side of it is that they've been doing this for since 2008 so yeah. like the marvel fatigue piece of that is way more of a factor than the one batman movie and two Doom movies right yeah. so like you can't put it all against that but i do think that there's some inherent stuff there where like <clears throat> dc learned their lesson to a degree of like they they tried to do the mcu route it didn't work and then they said all right we're just gonna give our stuff over to um, visionary directors and let them do their thing and then we'll just yeah. build off that mm-hmm. and so when you bring in people who are more figureheads for tv shows right i mean like directors you direct an episode but really it's not they don't design the themes of a show or the um, visual dialogue or anything like that mm-hmm. so it works better in that sense because it kind of fits to the tv more where right. Marvel has kind of just fallen into the rut in an, to a degree. Yeah, and I think a lot of that, again, has to be with how the MCU does stuff. I think now that um, they're toning back on per, on having 50 shows a year, like I think we'll see that amended a little bit. But it's why yeah. Loki and WandaVision are probably still two of my favorite Disney Plus shows from Marvel. It's because they have that vision. They have a distinct visual style that you can tell just by looking like, oh, that's WandaVision up until like the last two episodes. Like that was really great. And same with Loki. That was consistently great. Um, so I think once you, when you are able to play in the same sandbox, so in the big major motion pictures, while also being able to put the director, writer, producer's vision and style into it, I think that's, I, it's, it's why I like the Batman. That's distinctly Gotham, but that's also distinctly Matt Reeves' vision for gotham Mm -hmm. so i'm i'm very i'm pleasantly and happily ready for more uh of denise vision of what dune is while also allowing someone else to have their input on it yeah i mean it's really going to come down to the writing right i mean Mm -hmm. they've laid the groundwork for a universe i mean frank herbert a long time ago did right um and then you know denise made it on screen and they're kind of continuing that and it's now just will the writing stand up Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I think visually it looks... I'm not going to say up to snuff with the movies because that's a high bar, but it does look pretty good. And we didn't really get a whole lot of the writing. So I'll be... Yeah, it's the writing and the actors' performances that I'm kind of holding out on. The music... Well, just, we we so. know Mark Strong's going to be good. 
Mark Strong's going to be he's, doing his darkest. He's not like the most incredible actor, but he's no. good in all of his movies. Even in Kingsman 2, which I don't like very much. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think that's all I got about this. I don't know about you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. I was trying to see who the uh, screenwriters slash showrunners are, but I can't mm. seem to find it on their IMDb page, so... Um, hmm. somehow frank herbert has a writing credit what how is that possible so did he write material for this i don't know apparent oh for the characters okay i was like what so Mm. apparently it is based on a novel oh or this says it's based on one of the brian herbert novels oh brian herbert well that's his son yeah no, I know Frank Herbert's on here for the characters as a credit, but okay, okay. So it's at least loosely based on some book that I don't, I don't know. Is yeah. it called Dune Prophecy? I have no idea. I don't, I don't know. But Brian Herbert's wrote like fifty Dune books, so it could be that, <laughs> and I just don't know it. So anyway, that's going to be our thoughts and initial reactions to the new Dune Prophecy uh, show on HBO Max. Uh, if you're oh, curious, shit, you want. Ooh. Breaking okay, so one of the guys that has the as a writing credit is named Jordan Goldberg. Do you know who that is? Off the top of my head, I do not. He has been a producer on Interstellar, okay. Inception, okay. The Prestige, okay. and Westworld. Okay, all right. And, the, well, The Dark Knight Rises is not great. I mean, he, so apparently he's been a long time... Uh, Nolan boy. Cohort of Nolan. Yeah interesting yeah cool i'm down for that excited about it cool yeah so yeah anyway those are initial thoughts reactions all that good stuff to do in prophecy if you like what we had to say if you want to see more of us saying stuff like this about things like this leave a like and subscribe also leave a comment what are your hopes and expectations for doing prophecy uh who is, what is your favorite mark strong performance let me know let us know down in the comments obviously um, shazam oh yeah actually though he was pretty good in shazam (laughs) pretty good the first Um, movie was good it's good go watch shazam after you watch dune one and two uh go and watch shazam and then watch david lynch's and the fall guy and the fall guy um and then matt reeves apes trilogy anyway so do all that like subscribe comment follow us on our socials we stream every monday and friday with some bonus streams sprinkled in between here and there um we'll have more trailer reactions and movie slash tv show reviews coming soon probably i don't know might be talking about x-men very soon so uh yeah stay tuned for all some seeing some stuff the old twitter anyway i won't get into it now but anyway stay tuned we got great stuff coming your way so uh until then uh it's been fun to talk to you call me